So in this video, I'm going to talk about another technique known as the rationalizing by conjugates. Now, in case you've forgotten from a uh, way long time ago what conjugates were, conjugates occur when you have a binomial, so something with two terms, and all you do is change the sign. So for instance, if you have a plus b, then its conjugate is a minus b, and vice versa. If you want to find the conjugate of a minus b, it's just a plus b. They're essentially opposites of each other in one way only. Just one of the signs has changed. Now, when you learned rationalizing probably the first time, it was probably algebra 2, maybe even geometry, uh, and they would talk about rationalizing the denominator, where you would try to make the denominator some number or something else so that there wasn't a square root in the bottom. Now, that is still a great way to describe it, but here's the thing. It doesn't always happen in the denominator. It might be that I have to rationalize the numerator to make things work out nicely. So for instance, in this situation, I have a situation right now where I've got the square root of x minus 2 over x minus 4. Now here's the thing. If you plug in 4, the square root of 4 is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. And on the bottom, you've got 4 minus 4, which is also 0. So again, we have another indeterminate form, 0 divided by 0. So let's try rationalizing here. What I'm going to do is try to manipulate that square root part to try to make things a little bit different. So what I might ask, is the conjugate of that numerator, the square root of x minus 2. Well, if it's minus 2, I want to make the conjugate. I'm just going to make it plus 2. So that's what I'm going to do, is I'm going to multiply the square root of x minus 2 times the square root of x plus 2. And if I do it on the top, you better believe we're going to do it on the bottom. So let's see what happens when I multiply now. So I'm going to do the square root of x times the square root of x, which is just going to turn into x. I'm going to do the square root of x times 2, which is 2 times the square root of x. I'm going to do negative 2 times the square root of x, which is minus 2 square roots of x. And I'm going to do negative 2 times positive 2, which is going to make negative 4. All right, on the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and leave it alone. You'll see why in a second. So here I go. If I try to eliminate common terms, I've got this positive 2 times the square root of x and a negative 2 times the square root of x. Well, they're just going to go away. I'm left over with x minus 4 on the top over x minus 4 times the square root of x plus 2 on the bottom. Well, again, think about it. I can reduce these common factors. So x minus 4 over x minus 4 leaves me with a 1 on top over the square root of x plus 2. Well, here's the thing. I can determine the limit as this approach is 4, I can. All I have to do is plug in 4 and see what happens. So let's see. 1 over the square root of 4 plus 2. The square root of 4 is 2, so 2 plus 2 is 1 over 4. Boom! Done. There's my answer. Now, you notice how that worked. When I multiplied by the conjugate, in a lot of cases, it simplifies it a lot easier. Now, here's the thing to remember, and I don't know if anyone ever told you this, so let me be the first. When you guys were doing the difference of two squares and you were factoring things like that, that worked out nicely because it was conjugates. Huh, fun fact. So I'm going to look at one more example real quickly, and it's going to be this one. So I'm going to take the limit as x approaches 0 of the square root of 3 plus x minus the square root of 3 over x. Again, this is going to be one of those indeterminate forms because if you plug in 0, you get 0 over 0. Don't believe me? Just check. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply by the conjugate. You're asking me which conjugate? Well, the numerator, of course. So it's got the square roots. It's going to be a lot easier if I multiply by its conjugate. So what's the square root of 3 plus x minus the square root of 3's conjugate? Well, change that sign to a plus. You'll find out. Again, make sure if you multiply by the conjugates, you have to do it to the top and to the bottom. All right. Let's keep going and see what happens. So I'm going to multiply. Now, watch me do this. I'm going to multiply these square root things together, okay? Because if I do that, the square roots are going to essentially knock themselves out. So I'm going to end up with 3 plus x. Now, like I said before, when you're multiplying by these conjugates, you're going to get a positive one, but you're also going to get a negative one there too. So you don't even need to write those down. It's, again, multiplying by essentially two opposites. You're going to get two squares. So you're going to have the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 plus x, and then you're going to have a negative version of it, 
which are essentially just going to cancel each other out. There's no real need to necessarily write it, but I always do because, again, that's how you make mistakes is when you skip steps. The last part is you're going to take this negative square root of 3 times the positive square root of 3. Well, so that means you're going to get the negative square root of 9, which is just negative 3. Okay, so I'm at that point in the top. On the bottom, again, I'm just going to kind of leave it alone for the minute. Uh, I don't really want to mess with it too much for a good reason. Again, it's going to kind of do the same thing over here. So 3 plus x minus 3, those 3s are going to knock each other out. So we're going to have x over x times the square root of 3 plus x plus the square root of 3. Look at those x's. I got an x on top and an x on bottom. I made that parentheses really big for some reason. So x and x, I'm going to have 1 over the square root of 3 plus x plus the square root of 3. Now I can plug in zero. Let's see what happens. So one over the square root of three plus zero plus the square root of three. Well, that's going to be the square root of three plus the square root of three, which hopefully you guys remember is two square roots of three, and that's the bottom. So one over two square root of three is my final answer. Hopefully that helps illuminate this for you, and hopefully you guys will start looking for conjugates.